What is the Matrix? Welcome back to a brand new video of the Targeted Individual Program, Targeted Individual Experience. Just want to do a quick video and want to uh, show you guys some key facts. Uh, one of the things that they've been doing since they've been targeting me so heavily, and I've experienced this before, whereas they will uh, target me slowly, use certain groups of people, uh, predominantly women, Right, particularly black and Hispanic women, uh, they will go through a period where they will use primarily one ethnic group of women, then there will be a combination, then there will be another ethnic group of women. Right? So I talked about trying to create this, um, uh, trying to condition me subconsciously, but because I see the conscious, uh, I see it consciously, right, to where I can able, where I'm able to uh, not allow their conditioning to affect me all right so the use of lighter skinned women uh lately particularly lighter hispanic women lighter uh black women uh to create this um desire for a lighter skinned woman right and again i can like i said i can see their manipulation right it's like you know in the matrix movie with neo you start to see all the numbers well i can basically see their condition and tactics and methods whenever i look at television shows uh, uh, social media, certain things that they'll do, understanding that they have built into these, these mediums, right? A subconscious, uh, conditioning, right? Um, uh, uh, brainwashing tactics and methods, right? But anyhow, um, I was on Facebook and I was, was going back and forth with this person, um, because I, I want people to understand how, uh, people can be conditioned and particularly uh, religious people, right? How they can, particularly religious black people and particularly religious black women who don't want to see the truth in front of their eyes. So they will post these things in which no other group of people or women you see posting. And when I push back, right? With, with, with truth and facts, then, you know, I'm being called uh, delusional, crazy, insult, you know, all these shame-based tactics that black women have been using against black men who are speaking the truth, right? And, well, they'll tell you that, well, you don't love black women. Yeah, I love, no, I love black women, right? I'm just trying to make you understand this war against us, right? And for TIs who are uh, other groups, right? Um, ask yourself this, which are the women in your group, if let's say if you're a white TI or if you're a, a Hispanic TI or if you're Asian TI or Arab TI, are the women in your group of ethnic, your ethnic group of women, uh, do they engage in some of these talking points, right? Other than the fact that you're a TI, so we know that they're going to engage in those things towards you. But I'm saying to the vast majority of women in your group, do they say these things to the vast majority of men in your group, right? Like, do they uh, um, say that they don't need no man? Do they uh, call you guys incel? Do they insult you, right, by saying that you don't love your mother? Uh, stuff like that because you're speaking the truth, right? Ask yourself that. And then come back, listen to what I'm saying. And matter of fact, go on social media and you go see all these black women disparaging their men. That is psychological conditioning. That is brainwashing, right? That's an, an aspect of it. Another aspect of it is that you see women, whether they're or particularly, again, uh, Negro European women, black women, right? Who are obese, overweight, not attractive at all. And again, uh, attraction is subjective, right? Beauty is subjective, but what you would consider to be attractive, right? They're not, fit they're not um and even if they don't work out they don't they're they're um 
overweight or obese, right? And yet, when I say that, you know, black women need to take their health seriously and they need to work out more, they need to watch what they eat. Again, that's considered hate, right? We've seen some women, black and white women, who will go to the doctor and the doctor will say, hey, you know what? You need to lose weight. It is unhealthy for you to live like this and you will have serious health complications later on down the line. And what do they say? A lot of them, they will say that the doctor was fat shaming them. Well, how the doctor is fat shaming you, the doctor knows best. He's, he or she is concerned about your health. But I want you to understand also another form of social conditioning and psychological conditioning is the body positivity movement. And how did it start? Again, corporate white men. The McDonald's, the Burger Kings, the fast food, you know. They, have, they are making billions and billions of dollars in profit based off of people's unhealthy eating styles, right? And particularly in the black community where you have 80% of black women and 70%, no, 65% of black men are either overweight or obese. Okay? So, again, when I address these things or any other black person, men or female address these things, they're being attacked. All right? So, anyhow, let's get, let's, let me do this real quick because I really need to get out of here. But um, I want to show you guys this Facebook post. Okay? And again, uh, black woman, religious, of course. Love to say shit like this. Love your neighbor who doesn't look like you, think like you, speak like you, pray like you, vote like you. Uh, you know, love your neighbor, no exception. Now, I'm not saying to hate your neighbor, but I'm saying that you cannot have this mindset for you to love your neighbor. If you're living next to a white supremacist, right? Uh, and he is attacking you. He is calling you a racial slur. He's calling your children. He's telling your children that he's going to shoot them. Right? You want to love that neighbor? Okay? When you have, you know, again, a lot of black women do this. You see a lot of single black women will move into these uh, uh, neighborhoods that's predominantly white, right? Because they worked and they saved their money, so they, they think that they're giving their children a better life. You're not giving your children a better life. You are introducing them and you are bringing them closer to endangering their lives even more. But they don't see it that way. Right? They all ignore the reality. So when the kids are coming home being bullied, being called the N word, being this and that, then you see them on television crying and, and, you know, such and such. Well, how about you think before you put yourself and your children, and also, you know, there's no man in the house. Okay? See, it'd be a different story if there was a, a, a black man there. I mean, even though they'll still, these racist people will still attack a black man but at least if you have a man in the house that neighbor might think twice okay and if you uh and if you're if you or your husband uh is a legal firearm carrier you own a firearm that neighbor's going to think twice okay but they love to say stuff like this because i'll tell you what no other group of people male or female are saying this. They don't post shit like this. You only see Negro European religious fanatical women posting stuff like this in mass. Okay? So, I responded. I said, Negro Peans, <laughs> do the crying emoji, will destroy their own in order to love everyone else. All right? See, they will say this stuff to other groups of people, but then they will turn around and they'll tell the person that looked like them, oh, I hate you. I wish you were dead. I'll kill you. All this nonsense, right? But when a white man comes in and calls her, uh, uh, you know, a, a black B word or the N word, right? You see, you see them on television crying. Okay. Do you see that? I just watched a video where you have a black woman and her son again, no male in the house. She called, she, um, her neighbor was playing loud music. She asked him to slow it down. Neighbor was white, right? She called and complained about her neighbor numerous times and the police never shows up. So she starts honking her car horn. 
Okay. And guess what happened? The police shows up. <laughs> okay. Uh, asked for her ID. She didn't want to show it to him. And he arrested her. The police officer, white police officer, pushed her son, a 16-year-old son, pushed her down on the couch and put her in handcuffs. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, these women, they just don't get it. And they don't want to get it. They don't want to understand. And they put our kids, our children, in danger by ignoring the reality and the facts. Okay, so uh, here's the thing. Yes, I, I said what I said, and then she's like uh, um, uh, constantly coming after their own with all the smoke reserve only for those that remind them of their self-hate mass and fake nationhood. I don't, <laughs> you guys know me. I love being black, okay? I do not hate being black. I love it. To me, it is the best. All right? If you're white and you love being white and it is the best for you, good for you. That's how you should feel. But a lot of black people, because they are conditioned into self-hatred, right, don't love ourselves. Uh, and we don't love each other enough to want to speak the truth. Particularly, we see this with, with black women, right? How they will set up other black women even their children for failure by ignoring the truth, right? By telling these, telling their daughters, oh, you don't need no, you don't need no man. You don't need a husband, you know, but yet they put them in college and take out all these loans and, and put them in financial debt. Working in jobs that will never pay them enough to uh, pay off their college debt, you know, in 10 years or so. Again, that is the financial market using black women for financial gain. But they fail to see that. They fail to understand that. So I said to her, uh, you don't know how to love. What you want is a man to be a financial sponsor, which is true. That's, that's, they said it out of their own mouth and they're proud of it. So you can live in your delusion of fun trips, sexual fantasies with no accountability. That's exactly what they want. And that's exactly what they, um, particularly the sexual fantasy part, that is what the white supremacist has allowed them to engage in and with no responsibility, with no accountability. Right? Then she calls me an insult <laughs> and delusional is crazy. And I'm like, oh, listen, I'm not delusional. Uh, well, put like this. We all have some delusions. Okay. All right, but I'm grounded in facts and reality, which they don't want you to be. Even if you're white or you're Asian, if you're TI, and you know you realize certain things and you know the truth, right? They target you, okay? Because for them, it's about control. And once you come into a certain level of consciousness, right, you start to take away their power from controlling you in such a way that benefits them and is detrimental to yourself and to the people around you. And they don't want that. All right. So again, um, they call me again, insult, then say, I am, uh, he says, I see from your pathetic page, again, the insults that you, uh, you're, you're obsessed with the black woman, uh, malign it. And again, let's look at, First of all, let's look what it, what is an incel. So, an incel is okay. Um, this is not what I. Yeah, here you go. Uh, a member of an online community of young men who consider. First of all, I'm not young. All right, I'm 52, 53. Um, who consider themselves uh, unable to attract women sexually, typically associated with views that are hostile towards women and men who are sexually active. Again, that's. That's, uh, you know, totally inaccurate. But hey, you know, if me speaking the truth and one, uh, wanting black people, particularly black women, to understand that there's a war going on, okay, and they're being manipulated with lies, then hey, <laughs> whatever. Then, uh, so malign. Speak about someone in a spitefully critical 
manner. Who's speaking of, again, these are words that she's using to describe me, right? But yet she's calling me, uh, she called me an insult, right? And, and, and say I'm woman hating. I'm not woman hating, right? Again, not when you're saying the things out of your own mouth and I'm just repeating what you say. This is not my opinion. This is what you said, right? Particularly women, particularly black women. You can go all over social media and see all the posts. There are thousands, not even hundreds, thousands. Go on to any other, uh, um, go look at videos by any other group of women and you don't see anything like that. You know, I'm on Facebook and I can show you, uh, you know, you have black women in their 40s and 50s in their panties and bras shaking their behinds and saying to themselves uh, or saying that this is what freedoms look like. How is, how is freedom? Look, freedom looks to you like, yeah, getting down to your panties and bras, even stripping naked or twerking, you know, you're behind and that's freedom to you. That's empowerment. Right. But then, you, you know, you want to talk about, uh, you know, people should respect you for your mind, but you're not showing them your mind. You're showing them your sexuality. You can't show people your sexuality and want them to respect your mind. Okay. It doesn't work like that, but I want you to understand how they're being conditioned. And I want them to understand how they're being conditioned. As Dr. Amos Wilson said that in order to destroy a people, particularly black people, you have to create within them a backwards mindset and you have to continue conditioning them with a backward mindset so that when they have, children they will condition their children with the same backwards mindset that you've conditioned them into okay so let's look at some facts right which again they hate that because i was putting together some articles to show you guys and they were using <laughs> the sirens because again um you know destroying their talking points right yeah yeah uh so let's see Right, so a lot of black women celebrate being single mothers. You have all these articles talking about how, yeah, let's let's redefine uh, the black family, you know, with the single mothers and single mothers are doing great and all this stuff. Again, all lies, lies. This is what the media is perpetuating towards black women, particularly single parent black women, right? While ignoring the reality. So, anxiety and depression associated with America. Mind the gap. Worsening mental maternal health, uh, mental maternal mental health outcomes during the pandemic, right? With black women. And guess what? Black women were being diagnosed with the most uh cases of depression, anxiety, mental health. Right? Not also that. But it's just read. It's a pregnancy and childbirth can be joyous time in a woman's life but can also be challenged, a challenging one. Besides the physical changes that occur during pregnancy and postpartum, about 20% of women may experience mental health challenges. While increasing awareness of mental health needs has led to various national efforts to improve mental, uh, maternal health care, black mothers disproportionately face disparities in accessing and receiving appropriate health services. In the United States, black women are three times more likely to die from childbirth. And black infants are two times more likely to die before their first birthday. Okay. But yeah, everything is fine. You know, black women are doing great, right? Black single mothers are doing great. Okay. Regardless of socioeconomic status, black women have historically experienced higher rate of medical complication. Example, hypertension, pelvic floor issues, hemorrhaging, poor pr practitioner, patient advocate and communication and fewer postpartum mental and physical health support. Uh, uh, awareness of these risks put black mothers at a higher risk of prenatal um, perinatal and postnatal mood and anxiety disorders, PMAD, such as depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive behavior, uh, disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. But yeah, but you're doing great. Right? See, again, the conditioning is to ignore the reality and indulge in the delusion because it makes you happy. It makes you feel good. So all you got to do now is tell them things that make them feel good and they run with it. You know, I talked about the 
there's just the post on social media about a billionaire who has a black wife and he's in the post it says um billionaire white billionaires prefer uh black women because they could they protect their assets <laughs> i'm like okay so they must be the god dogs of the white man's asset really but then come to find out that it was a black woman that posted and it was a lie this man never said that and he had to send her a cease and desist order because you know that post had become so popular many women were using that to shame black men right to prop themselves as, as being the most desirable how can you be the most desirable when again 80 percent of black women in the black community are overweight or obese and 80 percent of those are obese and that's not me hating that's me stating the facts that's me wanting to let black women understand that you need to you need to start eating healthy exercising to be healthy so you can be around for your kids right so you can enjoy your life healthy okay that's not hate but the fact is that when you as a black person particularly as a black man love black people want to see what's good for black people want to be, see black people to do better and so you start speaking about the truth about this white supremacist system, this white racist system, and what it has done to us, and the delusional mindset it has created within particularly black women, you know, we're being attacked and say that we hate black women. So that's why you start to see how they'll also use all the black women in my targeting because they have been so jaded, right? And then, you know, they're like, well, other groups of men are winning. Yeah. Because we live in a white supremacist society where the white supremacists who are in power, right, are engaging in covert warfare against black people, particularly black men. But you're all too blind to see the war because you're too delusional when it comes to religion and thinking that you should um, love everybody, including your enemies, including your racist neighbor including other groups of people, but hate your own. So speaking the truth and speaking facts is love. But what they have done, again, is they have gotten them to con and conditioned them to believe that the lies are truth. And then when somebody is lying to you, that means they love you. Whereas if somebody's speaking the truth, right? Somebody's giving you the truth, that means that they hate you. Again, a backwards mindset, Dr. Amos Wilson. You have to condition black people with a backwards mindset so that they'll think backwards, they'll behave backwards. Okay? So here we are again. Black mothers twice as likely as white mothers to be hospitalized with pre perinatal mental illness. Okay? I'm not going to read the, the, the article. Okay? Just a few few lines black mothers are over twice as likely to be admitted to hospital with perinatal mental illness than their white counterparts a guardian analysis of hss figure shows with the racial disparities being described as horrifying again they is their words right and this is a white media it's horrifying but black women don't see that as being horrifying because we are so conditioned with trauma and conditioned with a level of self-helplessness, right? That our trauma and the trauma that's being done to us, it has become normal. And you cannot operate in your correct mind when you're always being traumatized. Okay? So there were 70, 777 admission to, and this is in England too. This is not the United States now. So I want you to understand, it's not just here in the, the US, but black people live in, in Western countries, right, with the majority population are white. Okay, uh, so there were 777 admissions to NHS England Hospital of people with a primary diagnosis of uh, puerperal mental disorder, occurring in the six weeks after childbirth between 2020 and 2022, 2023. Of these, black women make up 12% despite accounting for only 5% of deliveries in the same 
period. They were also more like more than twice as likely to be admitted to a hospital than their white counterparts, according to analysis. Okay, several factors contribute to the ethnic disparities, including structural inequalities with women from ethnic minority on average being worse off socioeconomically, difficulties accessing service, and cultural attitudes towards mental illness. Dr. Katie uh, Merrick, a senior clinical research fellow and honorary consultant psychiatrist with NHS uh, Lorian. So again, right? Then, I read this one already. Um, okay, so let's, here, let's talk about another aspect of it, of this, right? The conditioning of black women to identify as bisexual because it's the cool thing to be into. See, they always want to be the cool girl. You have black women in their 40s and 50s, right, who are hanging out with younger people or other group of people, particularly white people, white men and white women, who may be bisexual or more fully sexually liberated <laughs> right but again that's not the vast majority of white people because we know that white people today identify less and less as gay bisexual and transgender even though that's what they'll show you on television on social media to make it seem as if that is a big part of uh the white population and maybe at one point it was but not so much anymore Okay, so you have women in their 40s, black women in their 40s, who have been jaded in relationships and are now exploring, you know, bisexual lifestyle or lesbian lifestyle. Okay, and you should remember a few years ago, 23% of, actually 26% of young black women identify as bisexual and lesbian. And I'm sure that number has increased. Okay, and then on top of that, you have more women who are in the closet. So I remember at one point they used to talk about the down low men, right? But more black women are in the closet, are down low, bisexual and lesbian, than black men who are bisexual or gay, uh, you know, homosexual. And they are more likely to stay and remain in the closet. Okay, so you should guys go read this article out. Just want to point out a few things, all right? Not also that, but you also have women, straight women, who will have sex with bisexual men, particularly in on college campuses, where again, parties, drugs, and these drugs are meant to do what? To heighten your sexual experience, to uh, make you more susceptible to having sex with the same sex okay and then you have black women who seek out bisexual men because of their sassiness they they're more feminine okay and putting themselves at high risk for catching or being affected with hiv and they know that these men are bisexual and they put themselves at risk but again if they do get hiv Who's the, who are they going to blame? The men. Because they're going to always, this white supremacist system will always condition black women to blame black men, even when they're making the decision, even when they know the truth, even when they're being told the truth. Okay? I want you guys to understand that. This is what they've been doing to black people. Okay? And as a TI, understand that they're going to try to do this to you. They try to uh, they'll destroy your relationship, right? They'll isolate you, and then they'll start to use gay men, uh, or if you're a straight man, or if you're a straight woman, lesbian woman, or bisexual men and bisexual woman, so you can sleep with, right? Again, it is called a ritual, or a traumatic, or trauma-based uh condition it okay and we know when you are traumatized what the mind does 
This is how they can manipulate people. They can create enough tra traumatic experience in the lives of people within the public. And so they can shape their mind to whichever way they want using trauma. Okay. Not reading the articles. Now, uh, there's a lot of articles online talking about um, single black mothers and they're doing so well in terms of uh, with their children education. Again, that's a lie. When you, when they start to, what they'll do is that they'll take a small pool of people like single mothers who children might be doing well in school or are doing well in school compared to the vast majority in which are not doing well. And then they will put those, you know, they're not going to give you the actual numbers, but what they'll do is I'll say, yeah, black women are, they'll, 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 they'll use a few people, a few single black women who children are doing exceptionally well, and they will prop them up as that is the norm. And it's not. So again, let's look at the truth. Let's look at the facts. African-Americans, and college education by the numbers. Okay. Particularly when it comes to H HS um, HBCUs, right? Historically black college universities, right? Make up only 3% of the country's colleges and universities, but enroll 10% of all African-American students, uh, students and produce almost 20% of all African-American graduates. Okay. Let's look at some facts. Okay. So even before graduating high school, Many black students lack the resources needed to get into college and to succeed there. So even today, you have, again, a lack of equal educational funding, equal educational opportunities, okay, even today. But when you speak to a lot of these, a lot of these single black mothers who are doing, uh, who are uh, raising children in a household by themselves, right? Their children are not doing well, right? So only 57% of black students have access to the full range of math and science courses necessary for college readiness compared to 81% of Asian American students and 71% of white students. A recent uh, UNCF report, a seat at the table, African American perception in K-12 in K-12 education states that African-American students are more likely to take remedial college courses than other student groups. The resultant lack of uh, preparedness shows up in standardized test scores. 61% of black students who took the ACT in 2015 high school graduating class meet none of the four ACT college readiness benchmark nearly twice the 31% rate of all students. Low school test scores makes the rest of the college application process more difficult, right? As I said, process, yeah, New York Predator Department. See, they hate when I bring the truth, the facts, because again, they want us to believe the lies and to live in the delusion, right? That's what they do, okay? And they can't arrest all of us. They can't set, set up all of us as black people, okay? So low test scores make the test make make the rest of the college application process more difficult. Getting accepted to a school, uh, earning uh, scholarships, and succeeding in later studies become more of a challenge. Okay, barriers to graduating from college for some African American students is evidenced by the uh, relatively low retention rates of Black students across the nation. Among students enrolled in four-year public institution. 45.9% of black students complete their degree in six years, the lowest rate compared to other race of, and ethnicity. Black men have the lowest completion rate at 40%. This high dropout rate is, as I said, 40% again. Uh, this high rate dropout rate is particularly due to the fact that 65% of African American college students are independent, meaning they must balance pursuing a degree with full-time work and family responsibilities. Okay. Again, facts, factual things that you can verify. Education inequalities K to 12, right? Look at the statistics. African-American students are less statistic one. African-American students are less likely than white students to have access to college ready courses. Right. Only 57% of black students have access to a full range of math and science courses necessary for college 
readiness compared to 81% of Asian and 71% of white students. Okay. Statistics too, even when black students do have access to honors or advanced placement courses, they are vastly underrepresented in these courses. Black and Latina students represent 38% of the students in schools that offer AP courses, but only 29% of students enroll in at least one AP courses. Black and Latina students have also have less access to gifted and talented education programs than white students. And you can read up all of this, okay? Factual things. This is what we should be looking at. Not the lies, okay? Not the lies by the white liberals, the white male racists who, again, are at war, are creating this war against black people, particularly black men. Okay, let's look at black students. This is from 2020, right? Percentage of black students from family living in poverty by parents, educated level, or family structure. 2018, right? This is black students, white students. So families living in poverty, uh, parents' highest level of education is less than high school, 64%. Compared to whites, 46%. Families living in poverty, mother-only household, 45%. White students, 39%. Families living in poverty, father-only household. Now, listen to this. When the children are living with their father, whether they're black or white, they have a lower level of poverty. 35% for black students, 20% for black, for white students. Again, factual things you can verify. So in the black community, right, is a reason why they remove the black fathers out of the home through manipulation through weaponizing each other ourselves and each other right but because we don't fully understand the war against us we we blame each other but we don't look at the bigger picture you know we don't remain committed for the sake of the children so that the children can can achieve more than what we have we are more all about our own selfish needs our own here and now, whether it be the churches or whether it be partying, whether it be going out, whether it be sleeping around or what have you, right? Whether it be creating, uh, putting our, our children in, in situations that can be traumatic for them, just as how we are put in a situation that is traumatic for us. We are not looking out for our children and for the younger generation of black boys and black girls, right? So when I speak the truth, when other black people speak the truth, Right? What do they do? They'll send these black feminist women, right? And they're being paid, they're paid shells, right? To attack us, to say we hate women, we hate black women, right? We hate our mothers. I love my mother, but I understand that my mother didn't know a lot of things. I understand that my mother was highly religious. I understand that my mother had no idea of what really white supremacy is because she hasn't been taught what white supremacy is. So she didn't teach her children what white supremacy is. And that's the danger. This is why we have to educate each other and ourselves of the war that's being raised against us before it's too late. Anyhow, again, we love to talk about how black women are the most entrepreneurs. You know, oh, we, 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 we have this program and black women is going to benefit from this program. Again, another lie. And black women see this and they start posting all this stuff on social media. See, uh, black women are the most entrepreneur. Black women are the most entrepreneur. Uh, have their most entrepreneurship. Really? Okay. But within three to four years, their business fail. Right? And on top of that, the most entrepreneurship, how? Because they were working for themselves. They started businesses. Uh, the most business uh, register. Right? But in terms of actual successful businesses, Y'all don't have the most. And that's the truth. And that's not me uh, trying to degrade you or uh, uh, speak in any other matter. It's the truth. It's the fact. But white media like to prop up, again, the failures of black women because it makes them feel good and make them believe that they're winning. Okay? So a venture capitalist fund, right? I want you to understand this. Right? $288 billion dollars Right, that the, f the firm deploys, deployed, but only 1% going to black women. Out of the $288 billion, only 1% went to black women. And then on top of that, you have white men who are suing the fund, 
right? The federal, the fearless, I'm sorry, the fearless fund program, because uh, black women were given, awarded $20,000 in grants, $20,000, right? And it's not a lot of black women, you, you know, it's not a lot, right? But white women can get hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars, white men also. Black people are not suing them. But it just goes to show you that they don't want us to have nothing, given anything, whether you're a black man or a black woman. So I remember what we were reading about this and black women were posting all over social media. And now look what happened. Okay, look what happened. They will dangle the carrots in front of your eyes and then they will use other groups of people or even white men to sue and say that they're being discriminated against. And guess what? The 11th Circuit uh, Court of Appeals agree with them. All right? So it's okay for them to discriminate against you. But if there's a program in which uh, you know, uh, you are getting grants to start a business because they because this we know in this white supremacist system that the only way that uh, you're going to be able to really succeed at your business is if you are given a fair chance and we know that they're not giving us a fair chance. This is why affirmative action was important. And even though affirmative action really benefited more white women than any other group of women, including or any other minority group, right? So-called minority group. White women receive, white women benefit the most from affirmative action. But let a black man or black woman, uh, um, you know, get some sort of uh, help from affirmative action and they're willing to sue. And they're going to use other groups to do it too. But anyhow, this is, I got to get out of here soon. What else I wanted to read here? Yes. So this quick, real quick. Uh, when they talk about black women being, again, the most entrepreneurial and having the most uh, small business, that's a lie. That's a lie. Again, you can go at the Pure Research. You can look at it. It says 85% of small businesses are owned by white people. And then Asian Americans at 11%, Hispanic adults at 7%, and black or African American adults, 3%. Right? And about 1% were estimated to be of American, uh, Native American, Alaskan, or Native Hawaiian, or Pacific Islander. So how you own the most small business businesses? How you are the most entrepreneur have the most entre the most entrepreneurs? Hmm? Again, you need to look at the truth and the facts, not what the media is lying to you. And again, because they understand how to uh, create, they have, actually they, they know that they've created a very egotistical mindset within black women. So they keep feeding them lies and they keep soaking it all up. Oh yeah. We, you know, we, we, we have the most, um, you know, such and such. Okay. And again, you guys should, for black people, black people who look at my video, go read this from Fulham, uh, Fordham Institute, right? It talks about how important it is for black children to be raised in household where you have a mother, the biological mother and the biological father or with the fathers. Because with, when the children live with the fathers, they do better, right? And they are less, as they become adult, uh, to end up in poverty. Uh, and I'm not saying to if, you know, to, if the father is bad, that, but if the father is in the better position, why not give him the, the, the children if he wants them, right? Why not? They're going to be, do better. They're going to be better. As opposed to you struggling with children that you can barely take uh, care of, which you yourself will most likely develop a serious mental illness. Because again, single black mothers, right, have the highest rate of mental illness diagnosis of any other group of women. Okay, I just want you guys to understand the truth and see how, again, I like to use not just my experience, but again, look at things in a broader perspective. Right. And as a TI uh, and also for other TIs of other group that, you know, when you look at this video, understand that when people saying, yeah, you know, like no one can uh, condition me and manipulate me. 
use us as an example, not just me as a black kid, but use black people, how we are being conditioned, how we are being set up through psychological manipulation, through covert warfare, to show exactly that, yes, this could be done, and it is being done. All right? So I'll talk to you guys in the next video.